I want to talk about the three places we're going to go to and the significance and in short, but I've talked about it more in detail in KL. Okay, so that's one. The second thing is I want to do a short prayer to start our pilgrimage motivation. We don't simply just go on pilgrimage. We make a good motivation and we do some good prayers. From here, all of you have your prayer book. Um, each, each individual Buddha nature and another Buddha's nature is exactly the same. They have all the powers and they have all the abilities to be able to be helpful to you in many, many ways. So what happens is, even though all the Buddha's abilities are exactly the same, their manifestation is different. The reason their manifestation is different is because of their prayers before they became enlightened. So if they have a particular prayer they have before they become enlightened, that's one. Second is certain Buddhas specifically emanated for a specific function to help you overcome something. Example, Heruka and Vajrayogini specifically emanated to help us overcome desire. Desire that creates all types of problems and anger and all types of disappointments and all types of projections. So Vajigini and Hiruka definitely had the power to help us overcome anger and attachments and greed and miserliness, but primarily the function is desire. All right? Yamataka's specific emanation is for anger. If we do Yamataka sadhana correctly and we do it systematically and we do it well, if we really do it well, we will see our anger transform and change to great patience. So what happens is Yamataka's specific function is to control one's anger. Vajugini and Hiruka's specific function is to control one's um, heavy desire, sensual desire specifically. So therefore, they are equal in power, they are equal in ability, they are equal in blessing, but because they, their manifestation is different, then they, have, they show different aspects. So the color of their bodies, the number of their hands, the stance, the implements, whatever they're wearing, their expressions, they also, how many faces, specifically is designed to affect us emotionally and psychologically in order to transform that certain type of emotion that is afflicting us. In this case, desire or anger. Now that we have come across the Dharma, and the Dharma is very rare, and the Dharma is very precious, now that we've come across the Dharma and time is short, we want to have a very strong life. We want to have a very healthy life. And we want to have a life that is very firm and stable. Because if we were to lose our life now, it would be a waste. Some people are forever depressed. Some people are forever unhappy. Some people are always forever 
unsettled and their mind is always not at peace. And the reason for that is very simple. When they have tremendous self-cherishing, when they have tremendous selfish mind, then the result of that will always be depression, loathing, unsettling, and a lot of disharmony in their mind. And that comes directly from what? Selfish mind. If you look at people who think about others more, they are much more happier. Example, I've read some interviews with doctors. And the doctors who know nothing about Buddhism, don't practice Buddhism, has nothing to do with Buddhism, has said themselves, patients who are more concerned about others have a higher recovery rate. Patients who are, have, have something to do to help others are happier and more cheerful. Whereas patients who always think about themselves, or they're concerned about themselves, or they think about their problems, they're always concerned about their problems, their recovery rate is slower, and also their mood is down. So even without knowing Buddhism, that's a fact. So similarly, if we're very, very selfish type of people, we will always, and I'm not talking about karma, definitely there's karma, but if we're very selfish people, definitely we'll always be very depressed and unhappy. Why? When we're selfish, we always think what we didn't get. We always think what we should deserve. We always think what we didn't have. We always think people didn't give us respect. They didn't give us face. They didn't give us attention. They didn't give us power. They didn't give us what we wanted. And then when we think about it a lot, we become very angry, we become very depressed, we become very sad. Whereas people who are not looking for something like that, they're usually quite happy. Why? Because their purpose is to help others. They're too busy to be depressed. They're too busy to be unhappy. They're too busy because they're thinking about others. So what's very important here is others versus oneself. Others versus oneself. So what I want this pilgrimage to be about is looking inside and checking ourselves out and seeing what we have done with our lives and what we have focused on and how do we feel about our lives at this point do we feel fulfilled do we feel we have done something good do we feel that we've been useful or have we spent our lives for ourselves now when I say that we've spent our lives for ourselves I don't mean this in an offensive way. That's what we've been taught, to take care of ourselves, to make money for ourselves, to entertain ourselves, to, to drink and to be merry and to, and to just use our lives that way to enjoy ourselves. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm saying that once you've heard the Dharma, once you understand the Dharma, your mentality should be different. So my point is what is, I want this pilgrimage to be a collection of merits to reflect on what we've done with our lives. I don't want to simply go on pilgrimage, offer candles, pray, 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 and then we go back to our respective countries. What I want is I want us to think, what have we done with our lives? What have we done? Don't say, well, I've earned money, um, I've got a job, I've got a car, I've got a family. That's, that's not such a big, big deal. Everybody can do that. So you think, am I very happy these days? Am I very moody? Do I become very unhappy? Do I become depressed? Do I think about others? Think about yourself and reflect upon yourself. We have five days, some of us six days, to really take it easy and go on a spiritual vacation. What is a spiritual vacation? Not to recharge, but to discharge. Discharge what? Our selfish thinking. I would like to take you guys to very holy places, but you have to understand these places have been where people have visited for hundreds and hundreds of years and done prayers. Okay, so these places that we're going to is specifically to collect merit, to remove our obstacles, so that when we go back to our respective countries, we can engage in our Dharma practice. Going on pilgrimage is not Dharma practice. Going on pilgrimage is collection of merit for Dharma practice. Okay, now the first place we're going to go to is not far from here by car it's 10-15 minutes if we walk it's 25 minutes if the cars come we take a car if the cars don't come we walk um, in Nepal that's how we do things welcome to my home <laughs> now um, we're gonna go to one place and it has a very holy Avalokiteshvara statue as you know that's Kuan Yin and we're not gonna do much there we're gonna offer a butter lamp and it's a small little area we're gonna offer a collective butter lamp I'm going to offer a butter lamp there afterwards you all can give me 50 cents, 50 cents, ring it, 
have to sense so we can collect it together. There are some places we can offer butter lamps all together, all right? The second place we're going to go to after that, so in Avalokiteshvara's place, what I want you to do is, when we go there, we're going to recite the eight verses of thought transformation. We're going to recite that and do one round of Omani Pemehom and pray to Avalokiteshvara. We can achieve great compassion, great compassion, all right? Then we're going to walk away from there for 10 minutes and we're going to go to the Tara place. This Tara place I went to only once 20 years ago. After that, I went several times, I couldn't find it. I went round and round many times, I couldn't find it. I went only once. This place is recommended by His Holiness, Kapji Trijan Ramji. Trijan Ramji said before in his teachings, if you were to go to one holy place in Nepal, you should visit this tar. It is said to have flown from Tibet and enshrined here in Nepal. That's all I know, that's all I heard. So if you say flown, it could be literal, it could be symbolic, I don't know. But it's White Tara, and she deserves our respect. So when we go to the White Tara place, what we're going to do is this. We're going to offer some incense, protector incense. We're going to offer some incense to White Tara, and we're going to do White Tara's mantra, Um Tari Tu Tari Tori. So I'll be short and sweet for all of you, because over there, there's not a lot of places to sit. There's a lot of bird uh, blessings. You know, when birds fly by, they bless you. Yes, and I, I, I don't want to be blessed today. <laughs> Um, so, so we're going to go to the White Tower place, and I want all of you, when you go there, I don't want you to pray for you. And you can say, but, but, but I came all the way to Nepal to pray for me. That's why you don't pray for you. Because when you don't pray for you, you don't think about yourself. You're becoming spiritual. I want you to go to the White Tower place, and I want you to pray for your enemies. I want you to think about your enemies and people that have hurt you and disappointed you and lied to you and, and um, broken their promises to you and those people who have tricked you for their long life and for their attainments. I want you to pray for your enemies, that's one. Number two, I want you to pray to White Tara very strongly, very strongly, that your mothers and your fathers who are alive, may they continue to live long and their body be strong. And if they cannot, at least may their negative karma be purified by their suffering. And if your parents, if your beautiful parents have passed away, I want you to pray to White Tara to bless them to take rebirth. As we go for pilgrimage to the Vajugini places and the Guru Ramji caves, I'll give you more instruction, I'll give you more talk. Remember the highlight of this trip is I will be teaching you guys Avalokiteshvara Poa, consciousness, consciousness transference. And this one is especially by the ear whisper lineage of the Gandhan lineage, the secret lineage. I'll be teaching you that. And that will be a prelude for us to learn the Vajrayogini I'm sorry, I'll be teaching you the Avalokiteshvara Poa, and that is according to the Gandhian Ear Whispered Lineage. And then that will be a prelude or to plant seeds in the future, we can practice Vajraginis Poa. All right, so the highlight of this trip. And we will go to one of the Vajragini holy places to do that. Of course, that won't be today. So after we visit Waitara and Avalokiteshvara, we're all going to get into a little car and we're going to drive down to Boda. Boda is 20, 25 minutes from here without traffic and it is the holiest and biggest stupa outside of Tibet, outside of India and it contains Lord Buddha's relics inside and it was made, I don't know, hundreds of years ago. When you walk in, please, we're not here to gossip, we're not here to talk, we're not here to play, we can do that when we go back home. What I want you to do, and I want Bill Key to look at the stupa, the stupa, the stupa. And you know what I mean. Good for you. After we circumvent on the way out, you can say look left and right for you know what. <laughs> Friends. Okay, now. Um, so when we go to the stupa, when we walk in, when we alight in the taxi, I want you guys to recite Ming Me Tebe, Te Jin Chen and Si. Why? Invoke upon the blessings of the three bodhisattvas. All right? There are advanced students here. There are students who just joined literally yesterday. So if we do complicated prayers, the yesterday ones might get bored. So we just do something simple but profound. As you're walking to Stuba, we do Miktsama, and then we'll circumambulate. All right? Follow me on the circumambulation. I'll go around three times the long circumambulation. Please turn the prayer wheels. Okay? After we finish, I'll take you to the next, next level on top. We'll circumambulate because the next level on top has holy images of Vajugini, Hiruka, Manjushri. Very beautiful. After we do that, we'll find a place 
to sit there to do some prayers. If we can't find a place, then never mind. But everybody follow along. Then when I say free time, then you guys can wander around that area because there's, there's some shops and some shopping area or whatever around there. And don't forget, if you're caught being a trader, you will be left there. And when you come back here, there will be no rooms for you. And I explained in Kuala Lumpur what traitor means. You may buy, you may buy drinks, <laughs> cakes, snacks, cookies. You may buy CDs. You may buy prayer flags. Let me think of something else. I don't want to be too narrow. You may buy, you may buy, um, oh, let me think, um, mala strings. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's quite a wide variety. Because we have four outlets, and if you don't get from our outlets, you get from here, I will never bring you here again. And I know most of the storekeepers, I'll just send them a message, charge them triple. That's right, so I'm watching. And I've got my spies out. So, we're going to go to Avalokiteshvara's holy place, and we are going to recite the eight verses of thought transformation. And we're going to recite Om Mani Peme Hom. There's no place to sit, we'll do it standing up. All right? Second thing is, then we're going to go to Tara's, the most holiest Tara, white Tara image in Nepal. This is recommended by His Holiness Captain Trijanaramji. I don't know what's so special about this statue, but if Trijanaramji says it's special, it's special. I don't question anymore. There are certain people in the world, like Trijanaramji, who say something, you don't need to think anymore. You, do, you don't need to think, you just do it. Some people say you need to check out your guru. That's when your guru is me, you check it out. But when they're Trijanaramji's level, you don't check out, you just do it. Right? It's like, oh, hi Shakyamuni, how are you? Let me check you out. No need. You don't go to Shakyamuni, hey Shak, let me check you out and see if you'll be good enough to be my guru. Or Zonk, but hey Zonk, how are you? You don't do that. You don't go, hey Zonk, hey Shak, hey Trij, or hey Song. Songramji, Trijaramji, Zonkaba, Shakyamuni. You just say, yes, sir. With Tamramji, if he tells you, say, ah, let me think about it. Tam, I, 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 it doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. Because I don't pretend to be enlightened. Well, I do actually, but I'm not. So, um, now, when we go to the Bodha Stupa, remember, when we walk in, please don't talk, recite Miktama. Why? It's your first time to come to Holy Relic, a Buddha Shakyamuni Relic. First time. Don't waste that by gossiping and talking. Not that there's anything wrong. Let's use this pilgrimage to collect merit. All right, let's walk out of Nepal with a halo. Let's walk out, okay? Now, any questions about what I mentioned just now? Any questions? Good. I want all of my friends here and everyone, everyone to please uh, make a good motivation. We are not here to have a good time, but we are going to have a good time. We're not here to soak in the culture, but we will. The culture here is beautiful. We're not here to enjoy the wonderful weather, but we will anyways, because it's a given. We're not here to enjoy each other's beautiful company and get to know each other better, but we will anyway. And some of you are longtime friends, some of you are new friends, some of you I've, I've known for 17 years, some of you I've known for 20 years, some of you I've known for 10 years, 5 years. We're all here. Look at this, we made it. We actually made it. The plane didn't crash, we didn't miss the plane, we didn't lose anything except for a handphone. We, we, we made it. We are here. Um, Raj Kumar was very wonderful. They got us through immigration just like that. They said to immigration, hey, there's Rimji here. They said, okay, right through. So they, no kidding, we just walked right through. You see all the people online looking at us like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> we walked by like this. <laughs> One of them asked me if I was the Dalai Lama's younger brother. I said, maybe. Yes, I felt really good. And um, we went through customs real fast. I mean, it's the first time. 60 people, they didn't check anything except for the uh, Raj Kumar's TV. <laughs> Think about it, quite easy. So it was really smooth. And then uh, we, took a we had a wonderful little brunch, and we had a little nap, and we're relaxed. We're ready. Okay? So anybody have any questions? So we have a wonderful program ready for all of us for the next five days. So you guys just tag along, okay? And we're going to have a good time, and we're going to enjoy. Everybody give each other a hug. Yes, everybody. A real hug. A real hug. Henry, hug, hug, hug somebody. A real, real hug. Feel it. Feel it. Feel you're going to do something good. forms of
chin is the avalok tishra. You show everybody on. Next person come, you show, show, show. This is all avalok tishra forms. Bear mind, give you this one, remember? And show this one, Manjushri. Everybody here, Manjushri? Manjushri. Show everybody, huh? walk around look at the wall is that all the forms of Alok Adishra has Manjushri, has Thousand Arm, Kuan Yin, all around. It's very old, alright? Let's read it all together. This is a very whole Jo Zamling Karmo is the name. So this is a two-hour Kuan Yin, okay? After we recite the eight verses, we recite Om Mani Om, then we circumambulate, make an offering, then we go to Tara. Okay? With the thoughts of the Omani Peme Home. And then circumambulate around three times and we meet right here. Okay? Go. Omani Peme. Omani Peme. Omani Peme Home. Omani Peme Home. once a year here to wash and clean and consecrate and put back in every year. They don't treat it like a statue, they treat it as a living Buddha. Isn't that beautiful? Everybody here? Yes. Let's go to the Tara place. Let's make a dedication, okay? Janju. This is the famous white, yellow, and it's a green tari. I thought it's red. Very famous. We're offering incense also to the local deities. And we offer incense. Incense is, is a cause for us to be able to hold our vows, hold our promises, hold our samaya, and hold our commitments very strong. And what, why is it important to hold our commitments very strong? Because it is the way to break our habituation. When we have a lot of habituation, we create a lot of negative karma. When we are, even we know intellectually what to do, we still don't do. Even we've been told so many times how to transform, we don't transform. Even though we meditated and we read how to transform, we don't transform. And we, when, when we don't transform, we create trouble for others, we create trouble for ourselves, and we create a lot of negative karma. And we slow ours and other people's Dharma practice down. So breaking happy situations is a very hard thing for most of us to do because it's many lifetimes. So the way to break happy situation is to take vows. If we take the vows not to break them and to hold the vows very strongly. If we hold the vows very strongly, at first it's difficult, in the end it becomes easier. So offering incense to the goddess Tara or to all the Buddhas is very important for holding our vows. On top of that, please think, may my mother and father have long life. My mother and father who have passed away take excellent rebirth. And all of us have excellent health, wisdom, and great understanding of the Dharma. Great Mother Tara, who is in the form of the white main principle form here of long life, by the power of Trijana Ramji's words, by the power of Trijana Ramji's words, 
by the power of Chujanamchi's words, may our wishes come true. Please think like that. Everybody, one by one, single line, come up, offer your flowers to Goddess Tara. And then after when you finish, I'll get a butter lamp, okay? And offer up and make your prayers. And then circumambulate around Tara three times. Please focus. This Tara site is extremely holy. Om Tare to Tare to Resoha. 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 It's a blessing, don't go like that. I'm going for a thought. Thank you. Tibetans, when you go like that, they do this. You know what I mean? Purify my karma. Yeah, and protect me. So when I give to you like that, you know why? Because you're hantu. That's why you run. Joe Mahoney, please let my life end with great Dharma, Dharma practice, and Dharma proliferation. And I bring tremendous benefit to others. Mother Tara, who, do, who especially liberates others and frees others from obstacles from doing Dharma, I beseech you for myself, my husband, my family, for my loved ones, for all those who have hurt me and benefited me. May I never be separated from you, this life, and May I reach your life and stay. Go on, Once you get your third eye, good. You have to look up, look up. Ah, good. Don't wash it off till you go back to Malaysia. Think about Tara. Think this is a blessing of Tara coming to you. This is your central channel where you open up all your channels. Wonderful, we had a pilgrimage with the goddess Tara, white Tara, yellow Tara, green Tara, fabulous. This red spot is open up the Kundalini in you, open up your central channel, and also is a blessing. The temple keeper told me to please bless all of you with it. So it's very, very, he asked me three times, I refused, the third time I said better not. And then the wonderful lady, she can be an emanation of Tara, we believe. 
and she put this on me to represent blessing all of you. So we believe that ladies that reside in these places are emanations of Tara, manifestations of Tara's energy. So we show them great respect. Okay? Let's do one circumambulation with full concentration and then we go up. And while we're reciting, when we're circumambulating, think Om Tari, Tu Tari Tori Soha. Come. Powerful spiritual practice to purify one's body, extend one's life, and also get rid of depression. Very powerful practice. Every day they come to do it, every single day. Just imagine. See young people prostrating, old people prostrating, ladies, men have to prostrating. See the monks meditating, hear people doing puja, hear people doing circumambulation. The whole area of spiritual energy, all spiritual, is so different than where we come from. And here everybody encourages you through spiritual practice. So when you're here, you, you want to do so different. This is a pilgrimage. Here people is not looking for money. Here people is not looking for fun. Here people not looking only for party. They actually look for something higher, much higher. And they start very young already. Because the whole thing bless you to think more. This society here is not materialistic. It's more spiritual. Can you imagine it's been here hundreds of years old with the Buddha's relic inside. The first time I came here is 20 years ago. I come here circumambulate every night, hundreds of times. 20 years ago and I've been coming many, many times, bring many people here. It's a world heritage also, this one. The purpose is to seal the good thing that we did. Seal, it means to rejoice. So all of us can meet again and again in this life to do good things and in future life to do more good things. So the hug is not a joke. You must feel, I did something good. So Tibetan way, we have one to rejoice, but we do Malaysian way, just give a hug. So same thing, okay? So rejoice, feel very happy. You know the purpose is not a joke. Feel very happy, very happy. 
One more big hug and let's go. <laughs> So that in the future we join together the good things again. We make that affinity. You like? Let's put this way. Good. Now everybody. No, no, it's okay. Let them hug. Enjoy. 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 Now let's all go back together. Don't get lost. We will have a shopping day on Sunday and Monday, don't worry. We'll have Sunday and Monday to go shopping. We have to because Ken Nam going back. So we have to, sh we have to. So on Sunday and Monday, I basically tell you guys, get lost. What I don't see, what I don't know, don't harm me, what? <laughs> so if I see, uh, Par if I don't see Paris buying her tara, don't harm me, what? <laughs> let's go back and eat. And then after, let's have a wonderful review of what happened today. And then we go sleep early, huh? Let's go back.